Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Our next guest is the beautiful and talented star of Scream and Little Women. And now she's playing a young writer engaged in a dangerous relationship while vacationing in a beach house with her family. Let's take a look at Willa Fitzgerald in the aptly titled Beach House. Who's Paul? I have an old friend. He does conceptual photographs. Apparently they're quite edgy. It's gonna stay for a night or two. In the bedroom next to mine. You're one of those who hasn't figured out yet that you have to ask girls permission before you take your photo? Are you finding any inspiration around here? Paul finds inspiration everywhere. I realize that's your daughter sitting there with your old fling. I just don't know what ideas are real life and which are bullshit. Don't worry about real life. Just find something that excites you. So I guess that it's sex and violence that excites you. You going to bed? No. So have a drink with me. Okay. What happened last night? How well do you actually know Paul? Despite our past, he's still a stranger. There's something wrong in there. It's my take on a genre of Italian horror films. This is Hannah. Our last project together. It feels real. Oh, it is real. The number you have dialed cannot be reached at this time. I can't help feeling that he enjoys violence especially against women. We still have rules about what sorts of relationships are acceptable. Of course we have rules. Maybe you just don't know what it's like to break them. You can be difficult to figure out. I can say the same thing about you. Are you afraid of me? She's out there. Yeah. Hannah. If you're gonna show something, you have to really put yourself in a situation. Imagine what it'd be like to actually do it. I hope I haven't given you nightmares. Everybody, please welcome Willa Fitzgerald. Let's hear it. Hey there. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, unfortunately, I agreed with so much of what this character said in the movie about art and about making art. <laughs> There's a lot of good espousing about making art. Yeah. It's just uh, a creative process. This is your first movie, right? Yeah, and we shot it three years ago. Wow, where did you shoot it? In the Hamptons. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a job that was easy to take because when you're offered a job in September in the Hamptons, it's um, pretty much a no-brainer. <laughs> so what is it like three years later talking about your f doing press for your first movie? I imagine you have a lot more experience on set since then in terms of movie making. Yeah, definitely. Well, I, um, I shot this movie after I had already shot the first season of Scream and had worked a lot in TV. And... Um, it was really, I was so excited to get to shoot a movie because I come from a background of theater and knowing the full story and um, having a script that largely doesn't change. And I was really excited to kind of sink into um, a contained story for the first time on film. And it was also Jason's first film. And um, right, so- It's a much different experience than television, which is like yeah. script can change on the day, the episodes right. are going in a different direction. Yeah. yeah. And, and you never really know the ultimate end point of your character. You know your or, Yeah. And if the producers know, they rarely tell you because they like the, the element of surprise. Um, and so it was, it was a really collaborative process because it was Jason's first film and because we had such a, a great um, kind of ensemble environment. And all um, in one location. So I imagine yeah. for the most part one location. I yeah. imagine you're all kind of figuring it out together and really on set together. No one's really just showing up for their scene because everybody's yeah. sort of in the same scene together. We, totally. And also this is um this was shot as an I think an ultra low budget indie. Um and we shot it in twenty days and so we, the actors, me, Murray, Orla, and Tom, all actually lived in um, a beach house together in Amagansett. Was it the same house you were shooting it in? It was not the same house okay. we were shooting in, but it was like... Maybe almost a little too much. A little right? too much, a little, yeah. Um, it was like, you know, a, a five-minute walk, um, and we were on the ocean side, The we shot on the, the bay side, and um, so we kind of had this great like synergy between being at work and being at home and we would keep talking about the scenes and the script. Um, and we also had pretty uh, condensed shooting days cause we couldn't do overtime. So we shot like 6am to 6pm and then just like actually had 
the Hamptons beach house experience. No, I'd imagine, you know, having come from television, especially something like Scream, where it's a, a fair amount of cutting around and yeah. fair, kind of short scenes because yeah. it's uh, that's the story that's being told and how they tell it. You know, you have a scene with Murray in this in this movie that is, I think, about a 15 minute scene yeah. maybe, where we're really getting to know how these two characters operate mm. with each other. We're really seeing them grow close to each other. Now, most movies, let alone television, don't do I know, a scene yeah like that what was it like going into shooting that i mean it's great murray's fantastic and murray also um has done a ton of theater and uh so i think both of us a very theatrical piece right yeah and so um since both of us kind of come from that world and and were born out of that world uh we were really excited to get to have a scene that was so meaty and also jason always tried to cut as few times as possible. So he really, we didn't have many setups in a scene. We would kind of uh, probably only have two setups for a scene unless we were doing coverage. Um, And for that, there are two scenes that are kind of really long in the film. And for both of them, a lot happens and a lot of like um, emotional changes happen. A lot of plot shifts happen. There's a lot revealed. And it was just an opportunity as actors to really play with each other and listen to each other. And um, Jason was kind of really receptive to us having rehearsal on our own and kind of figuring out like what we felt the arc of the scene was and then us showing it to him. You have to do that with something like that. Yeah, because it, 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 when the director kind of comes in and like puts the blocking on top of it before you've had a chance to kind of breathe with it for a second, it can feel um, too confined and there's like too much limitation. And so um, it was it was great to have collaborators like that that let you when, play with the material. When there's so much to uh, one scene, you really have to know what you want to do with every line. Yeah. Every line has to be pretty important in a scene like that because there has to be a reason to be watching a scene this long. Yeah, and and like you said, I mean, a lot of it's a movie about it's a movie of ideas too. It is a thriller, um, and so there's like suspense and action and um, and scares. Uh, but it also is very much an idea movie, and there's a lot of um, a lot of Jason's own thinking about the creative process and what it is to be an artist and what it is to make things, and a lot of our a lot of those longer scenes are me and Paul talking about those things. And so it's kind of... Um, well, especially in a thriller, because so many thrillers are, uh, if they're not about it, they at least have an element of violence against women. Yeah. Most thrillers are, yeah. take, are, are about men pursuing and inflicting some kind of violence upon a woman or an evil woman you know, trying to steal a baby and kill a family or something like that. Right, you know? yeah. The hand that rocks. <laughs> Those are the only two types yeah. of thrillers in the only world. Two. yeah. <laughs> um, and so you have an artist in this who primarily, his work is primarily about extreme violence yeah. to women. So, of course, the characters are kind of, while they're talking about his art, they're also talking about the film that we're watching at the same time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I agree with that entirely. Do you and Murray, did you and Murray sort of talk about how the scene was that? Yeah, um, I mean, I think that we, the one of the scenes had been an audition scene. Um, and so whenever you have an audition scene, you already have the great privilege of having worked on it and done it for people before. And so we both kind of felt, we both had already really deeply connected with the material. Um, but then we literally, during lunch break, would just go and do the scene and figure out what we thought the shape and arc of it should be. And then we would show Jason. And I think that it's it was the fast, because we were working on such a tight schedule, like we had very short shooting days um, and also not very many days in total to shoot. It made things go really fast because we were able to f- kind of bypass um, a lot of the actual like rehearsal process when people are waiting around to do setups because we were just rehearse during How did Jason um, take, or how did you end up working with Jason after you and Murray had done the rehearsal? Was it then like, this is what we've got. What do you think? Yeah. You we collaborate just show, with us Yeah, now. yeah. Because like he's the one who's setting up shots. He's the one who kind of knows what he wants it to look like aesthetically. And we're bringing in what the emotional arc of the scene is, we think. What the beats of the scene are, we think. And then Jason can see what we've done 
on and tweak it so that it looks like what he wants it to look like and has the aesthetic feel of what he wants it to be. Um, but for the most part, we were always pretty much in line with each other because I think Jason in casting this film cast people who he felt already had an intuitive understanding of what he was looking for. And therefore I think he was so excited by what we brought in. And also he wrote this script. And so it was the first time that anyone was ever like reading his words. I think that that was so exciting that he often was kind of on the same page and, and with us, um, with us from the get go. But a good director will go, Read my words, make them better. Yeah. Make them better. And Jason was uh, like always down for that. Right. And if we ever had, you know, things that we thought needed little tweaks, he was always open to that as well, which is a pleasure. Were you a big thriller fan before uh, going into this or did Jason kind of turn you on to thrillers a little bit? Jason definitely pointed me in the direction of some older movies that I hadn't seen, including some Hitchcock that I hadn't ever seen before because he was really influenced by a lot of Hitchcock films in this uh, movie and also uh, some foreign films. He had a very, because I asked him for reference material before he started shooting because I wanted to kind of know what his aesthetic was and what he was looking for tonally um and it, so it really it helped me deep dive into some cinephile knowledge i think that people who really like film and know a lot about film will enjoy this movie because there are a lot of easter eggs oh. there's a lot of um there's a lot of just nods and references to you know hitchcock films or suspicion films of like the 40s and 50s and there's a lot it's of kind of the credits in the yeah as well. i know kind totally of that. and also the way that it sets up each family member and takes its time a little yeah. bit and not just necessarily slowly burns with plot but you know the opening with the kettlebell and each person in their separate rooms yeah it's very much like a an old foreign thriller and the time that it's taking to sort of sit with each person yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of playing with that idea of isolation too and um, I think that kind of goes back to things that Jason was thinking about, about the creative process. I mean, we basically have this girl, Emma, who comes from a very privileged, very insulated existence and is actively kind of wanting to get out of that, but has no idea how to get out of that because look at the life that she's living. She's spending her summer in a beach house away from everyone else with, you know, her parents. So it's, um, I think that... It, all of that it, it comes through in the in the way it's shot. Were you so you know one of the first things that you got was Scream, right? That was that was the first series that I was on. I was I did some other TV before that. Going from doing a horror TV show to a thriller movie, were you worried at all about becoming a quote unquote scream queen of any kind? I mean, you have yeah, had the chance totally. to do other stuff as well. Yeah, but. I mean, definitely. Um, this. I, this was just, it was, a, it, the scenes when I got them, it was A, a casting director who I love, and I respect all of the things that she ever, like, takes on to cast, and so whenever I get um, an appointment through her office, I'm always like, oh, okay, definitely gonna look at this one closer, and so she was casting, and um, I read the scene, and I was like, oh my god, this is great, it was, like, part of one of those really long scenes, where it's basically an exchange of ideas, and there's a lot of verbal sparring, and um, and I was like, this could be really interesting if the other person who's playing Paul um, is someone who I feel like I'm going to jive with. And when I found out that Murray was doing it, I was familiar with his work on looking. And so I was, you know, ultimately for me, I think that the fear of being pigeonholed um, in like one specific genre, especially now with the wealth of material that's available, I think is kind of less of a concern. And for me, what I'm really only ever looking for is character and interesting character and um, something that I haven't read before in some capacity. And, you know, there are many ways that that can, you know, manifest itself. But, um, yeah, I think you just have to go with what you're drawn to and the follow that impulse. The queen thing is a real thing, though, that I, is, I, yeah. I, for, I, I forget sometimes, but there'll be a great actress in a horror movie, and then you'll see that they're only in horror movies after that. And oftentimes when you're only yeah. in horror movies, you know, there's maybe like five big horror movies a year, and then there's <laughs> lots of other horror movies. I know, yeah. And people right. get kind of relegated to those roles somehow. And I, yeah. I don't understand why, because when someone does a horror movie or a horror show, you're doing 
so much acting of so much di- of so many different kinds. You know, you have to do yeah. comedic scenes, you have to do fear, you have to do love scenes, yeah. you have to do all these things. Yet somehow casting directors and directors are like only see those people as being able to do horror. And it's like if you watch a horror movie, they're doing everything. I I completely agree. Um, luckily, since this three years ago, and since you have not been and since Scream ended, I haven't been pigeonholed. But also, like at the same time, I'm always telling um, my team that I am open 100% to good horror still because I actually do love horror as a genre and I so think I. it's pretty amazing and I think that a lot of the filmmakers in the horror genre space are doing like pretty innovative amazing things with lower budgets mm-hmm. and um, I think that something that is kind of difficult in the cinematic world that we live in is that a lot of movies that are kind of middle middle range budgets don't get made um, with the exception of the horror movie space. And so I think that like that gives that space a bigger ability to tell stories that might not otherwise be told, have characters that might not otherwise have a place in other stories. A riskier story. Yeah. And um, I think that the best horror movies really do look at theoretical artistic problems cultural problems in a way that is just accessible and fun in some capacity and also challenging. And so, you know, it checks a lot of blanks for what I look for when I'm watching a movie. You said that you started in theater though. Have you yeah. been, have you tried to go back or have you done any theater? Do you want to? I, yeah, I'm so excited for the opportunity to do a play in New York. Um, and I think it, it's, I, I, it's been, I did a, a small play four years ago in the city and um, since then, it's just, you know, between travel for things that I'm shooting and being out of town, um, it's hard to, to get back into it. It's kind of very two separate different worlds. And it also takes you away from one world yeah. versus, you know, like shooting a movie or shooting a TV show sometimes could be 20 days or it could right. be like a month or two. Yeah. Play, you could be out of the out of the game for about... Six you know, months. Six months, yeah. Yeah, at minimum, you know? It's it's a big time commitment, um, but definitely something that I'm excited to go back to. Uh, let's get some questions from our audience. Who's a question? Mm-hmm. You. Hi. Uh, hey. This is going to be an online question. Cool. Um, Jeff would like to know, were there any actual scary or funny moments on set? Oh, yes, of course. Um... I think that uh, scary moments on set, I feel well, the, there's um, kind of an altercation that happens at night uh, on the beach. And um, we pretty much did our own stunt work. And um, it was both funny and scary because it was nighttime on a beach and there was no light. And it became a question of like how they were going to shoot it and how we were going to do it. Um, and that was another situation in which Murray and I just kind of had to like, you know, pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and be like, guess we're just going to figure this out. <laughs> um, but also, I mean, I, I, I think that some of the, my favorite memories of shooting, uh, the movie are just from living in a house with Tom and Orla and Murray for the 20 days that we were shooting because every morning we would go to the beach and either like walk or run or swim and it was actually shooting this movie was the first time I ever swam in the ocean What? I know how was that possible because I'm terrified of sharks like uh, the swimming they teachers don't normally as come a, that it doesn't close. matter the swimming teachers as a child had to push me into the deep end of the pool because I was convinced that when I closed my eyes a shark would like come out of the drain so now are you okay do you swim in the ocean yeah. a bit more now yeah that was the that was the moment this this movie will, will forever be tied with what my... was it like for your castmates to see you swim in the ocean for the first time they must have been really well, proud well it was Murray because Murray's Australian and so he kind of is a water beast and surfs and swims and he like <laughs> I just remember like the the waves on in the Hamptons on the ocean side are actually really big waves um as far as like New York waves go and there was like a storm coming or something and the waves were huge and I just remember Murray just like mermanning out and like swimming deep into the ocean I was like he's gone forever <laughs> there's that shot of him swimming and it's like oh that guy is a yeah, very good swim. swimmer he can really yeah. swim yeah uh, next I didn't look like that <laughs> when I was swimming in the ocean right here hi um I know that scream's coming back for another season and I know you're not in it but um I'm just wondering does it feel different for you now that you know you've been on that show for two years and now 
you know, you get to see the show like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. I I don't really know anything about um about the reboot at all. Um I I'm not even sure when it's coming on. Um but yeah, I'm I'm sure it will be an interesting new interpretation. One more. Hi, thank you for being here. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if you had any aspirations to direct movies. Yeah, actually, I'm um, I'm currently writing a couple of things and I'm developing a couple of things with some some friends of mine. I always think it's best to kind of I feel like I feel most fed creatively when I'm doing creative things in a lot of different um, areas and uh, especially as an actor where you and in a great year you're working six or seven months out of the year and you've always got downtime it's a great way of like staying engaged and um like creatively stimulated it's a great way of feeling like you're in control a little yeah. bit even if you don't make the things or right. they don't get produced it's like right. at least there is something that you are kind of in control of on your own 100 percent. yeah I feel yeah. that too with personal projects where it's like, <laughs> this doesn't get made. I don't care. At I least I've got this thing <laughs> that I feel like I control some small piece of destiny for yes, myself. Yes, definitely. I completely um, agree. Well, congratulations on Beach House, Willa. Thank you so much for being Thank here. When you. can people check it out? Uh, it's in theaters Jul oh, June 22nd, and then it'll be on digital streaming services uh, at the end of the summer. Everybody, please give it up for Willa. Let's hear it. Thank you. 